Film Buff Erring. Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Film Buffering. I'm one of your hosts, Coulter Harkins. I'm here today with Alex Tate and Andrew Johnson. And we're going to give you a fun one. It's Jolt. Lindy? Lindy? This is not a cure. The only way we're going to make progress is cutting edge avant garde treatment. I've got this condition. It makes me snap. Like Tourette's? Just a tiny bit more. Intense. I've upped the voltage, but there's only so much that the human body can take. This is Detective Vickers. Sounds like your guy was involved in some pretty sketchy business. I'm gonna find you did this. If you go down that path, you are never, ever going to get back. Deal with her. You spent years being forced to repress your anger. But now, you have seen how powerful you can be when you embrace your rage. Oh, seriously, you're gonna make me go through the whole face stomping, bone breaking, making a mess routine? Okay, fine. You're gonna get somebody killed. I'm trying to help you. Uh huh. How's that going for you? What is it about gross old men always underestimating women? Exactly that stupid. All right, we need a rundown. What is this about? Who's in it? Tell us some more, Andrew. Ooh, what a jolt that was. So exciting. <laughs> uh, a bouncer. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Aaron Strong. A bouncer with a slightly murderous anger management problem that she controls with the help of an electrode-lined vest she uses to shock herself back to normalcy whenever she gets homicidal. Oh my goodness, directed by Tanya Wexler, written by Scott Washa, and starring Kate Beckinsale, Jay Courtney, and dat man Stanley Tucci. I believe it's pronounced Jai Courtney, but I could be wrong. Oh, is it? Oh, I have no idea who that is, so. (laughs) You don't know Jai Courtney, bro? Sorry. Ugh. Was he in this movie? Yeah, yeah, he was, actually. Oh, okay. He was one of the stars. Uh, Alex, what did you think of this thing? Thing I use strongly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, where do I start? Where do I start? <sighs> Pass. I mean... <sighs> Uh, this movie was so freaking terrible it was just bad so bad from the terrible voiceover in the beginning to the terrible last line of the movie it was painful through and through Um, did you feel like you were getting a little jolt the whole time (laughs) No, and even the like, <laughs> even the like description of the movie that Andrew just read is a freaking lie. She's yeah. not even a yeah. bouncer. Yeah. She was a bouncer. Yeah, they once. make a reference to that one time in the movie. <laughs> She's not even a bouncer, and like, I, 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 I don't watch trailers, so I didn't really know what this was about. I kind of thought she like had a electric superpower or like a electric crime fighter or something. It, she didn't use the electricity to her benefit in really any way. I thought she was going to like, like alter the machine to like attack people with electricity. No, that didn't happen. But but I digress. (laughs) That is, that really isn't why I didn't like it. It just was like terrible scripts. There, there were a couple of redeeming qualities, which I'll give it like the fight scenes were actually kind of cool. 
And uh, Kate Beckinsale is still a strong action, you know, star. Like she was in Underworld and stuff. Shout out Underworld. Woo! Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's a solid actress. And uh, I didn't really have problems with her acting. It, I mean, the script was terrible. So, like, there's only so much she could do. But what she did, I think, was fine. Uh, Stanley Tucci is always solid. Uh, no, that's it. I think that's it. <laughs> All right, Andrew, uh, initial thoughts. Your turn. Go. Um, I thought that the runtime was fantastic. <laughs> On the money. Like a actually, actually tight I saw hour the 30. Minute, I saw the 90-minute yeah. runtime. I was like, Andrew's going to be a fan. <laughs> yeah, <of> right? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, th- this was one that actually, like, should have been an hour and a half, and it was an hour and a half. Like, I, I don't know, like, the last two or three weeks – We've done movies that were we were like that should have been an hour and a half. So I was like, <laughs> fair enough. Um, the cinematography I thought was actually really good. Um, just to come in optimistically, I, I thought there were some really cool shots. Um, specifically, there was one shot where the camera was really closely like tracking her when she was escaping the hospital. That I thought was really uh, well done. <laughs> And yeah, I don't know. I it was a movie that I just didn't pay much attention to, if I'm being honest, because it didn't like <laughs> really demand any attention. Uh, and one thing that I have to say is this really felt like it should have been a PG-13 movie that, for some reason, was an R movie. You know, there wasn't like yeah. gratuitous violence or anything, and even the swearing, I was like, okay, like. Yeah, they made a lot it of... Felt it felt like, weird. And it felt weird because it felt like it jumped into, like, the swearing kind of, like, cr- crude humor, like, halfway through. Like, it just kind of... Yeah. I was like, wait, has it been like this this whole time? Have they been using, this, like, this kind of humor to, uh, to like, spice up her character? But, yeah, it felt like yeah. a weird... weird I don't choice. know. I just, I just feel like it would have functioned better as a PG-13 movie for some reason. That doesn't make any difference. But if, if you're going to go R, like, do something with it. Yeah. Um, which they didn't but anyway yeah well I, I would say pretty good sets lighting that kind of like the technicals it's not like the technicals were that bad it felt like yeah. it was they were probably working on a somewhat limited budget and they kind of try to maximize it um but yeah i and again acting performances they were doing what they could with what they had but it, the big big downside of this movie was just not a great script he wanted to cook me fish. I get that they're trying to come up with new ideas and I appreciate that they're trying to do something original and something new, but at the same time, like it just wasn't a strong enough premise to, to, to base your movie around. And, and like cortisol being like cortisol issues do not make you superhuman. Like yeah. they, they would like, it doesn't make you stronger than you actually are. It just means that you're bad at impulse control. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't make you any like more like yeah so it just was it was i don't know it was just a silly choice i do think i honestly i think jay courtney shout out jay courtney not jay or whatever the heck you called him gotta um, shout him out he's a fan best, of the show so. his best performance by far that i've ever seen because <laughs> he's one of those guys that like he was in uh uh he played bruce willis's son in like the f- fifth horrible die hard movie that should never be watched. And then it's played like a lot of like, they try to kind of turn him into a character actor, but it's good to see him just be like, just hit what he needed to do for this movie. I was actually really surprised by it. Cause like he plays like Captain Boomerang and Suicide Squad that just came out. And it's like this big over the top Australian character and it just doesn't work. But he, this was his sweet spot where he got to like play around and do some fun stuff. Um, Kate Beckinso, right. At what she does, but yeah. the, can't elevate a project beyond whatever it is so i think when you have like a really strong concept and like an underworld then she totally carries it because she's a little bit low key but she's like still engaging to watch on screen but this yeah she didn't do anything to elevate the the material it just she just did what she could to get by um but yeah i just i went back and forth because there were times where i was like like 38 minutes in after like the car chasing, I was like, 
that's just, I have another hour of this that I have to sit through. <laughs> and then I kind of got into it again, but it, then it just got really bad again. So it just like, it was so uneven. Just yeah. like they could, again, they couldn't quite pick their direction and really stick to it. Like even that seemed like I do agree that that sequence with the, in the hospital with the cameras, but it just was all of a sudden like a different cinematic style. Mm-hmm. And it was just jarring and it. There wasn't a reason for it to suddenly look different. They were just doing a different thing because they could right. probably because of constraints and because they thought it would look cool, but it just didn't flow in the movie in this, in the sense of what was going on. Uh, Jimmy Cavazel, I think is, uh, is his name. The guy who played the cop. I thought he was actually yeah, good too. Bobby kind of all. He's from uh, Boardwalk Empire. Yeah, he's been a lot of stuff. He's a guy that I thought was like 50 years old at this point in time, but somehow keeps looking younger in every movie yeah. that he's in. I cannot figure it out. <laughs> I mean, I, like, I think seriously he... thought he was like a 40 year old Italian when he started acting, <laughs> and now he looks like he's like 40. No, still. I totally agree. I totally agree. Isn't he in uh, Ant Man too? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, that... but he he did fine, but his character was so stupid. The Empyrean Tower downtown. Thank you. I can't let you go there. You're not in a great position to stop me, are you? So how underdeveloped. This, how this <laughs> character was, was written, like, he, for some reason, trusts her, for some reason, puts his partner in danger, for some reason, has his kid in the back of his car and, like, is fine with this girl being in the car with him. For some, like, there's no explanation at all why he's like trusting her. Like, that made no sense. Literally, is like we need we need this for the plot to happen, and then it doesn't make any sense. And then the other cop was like the devil, and like (laughs) also when Kate Beckinsale like started the was the McLaren. Yeah, and and the girl detective is like, did I just hear a McLaren six hundred or six thousand? Did you guys hear that line? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, rec- I recognize that engine. Really? That sounds pretty good. What? Yeah, that Why one. is this a line? <laughs> He's like, I'm just relearning how to drive a stick, and then I'm going to go, like, those cars, I'm sure, are very difficult to drive. <laughs> you can't just jump into a, sp- yeah. like a high-end sports car and just <laughs> drive it. <laughs> Did she say she was relearning or she didn't know how to? She said relearning. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I was like, Jim, like, you're still going to stall out several times. Yeah. The the chase is not about to happen. (laughs) The chase wasn't even good. And like, New York is not easy, would not be that easy to like drive through that fast. And like, not, the chase was okay. Like, who would own a McLaren in New York? Uh, was he CIA? Is the, that's what it ended up being? Like he was CIA? I was yes. very confused by the end of the plot. Uh, yeah, I, so he was I, CIA, and yeah. but but he was there mm-hmm. and killed the guy. Yes, without her help. Yes, and then but I, he, he needed was, her to kill. And then her, he was then the, he just did it. Ah, my life. And then and then all of a sudden he was the biggest jerk on earth. <laughs> For no reason yeah. at all. Yeah. And didn't, then didn't have to be. <laughs> and then she tosses dynamite at him. And he goes, and What then is this? Scoots back into the <laughs> Plus like how did she still have that dynamite in the bag? Like the gangsters got her, right? Yeah, after fighting mm-hmm. however many guys. They wouldn't like look in her bag and be like, Oh, there's freaking dynamite in here. <laughs> They're just like, oh, we'll let her keep her bag in here. Also, it looked like they like computer animated the dynamite or the like C4, or whatever it was supposed to be. The explosion, like whatever. Sh- no, the shot when she's like goes into her, her apartment. Oh, her apartment. And it's all wired up. It looked like it was like not even actually a physical item. It looked like it was like, it was really weird and so blurry. Weird. Like they had CG, like put it in there. That. Like the John yeah. Wick dog poop, like for no reason. <laughs> It was also super weird that the like the villain she was trying to get was like the janitor from Harry Potter and like <laughs> a ninety year old man who's like the scene of him hanging from hooks from the ceiling. Yeah, what I was, was like, that? what? Yeah, he's creepy and nefarious and into he torturing was, himself. <laughs> he was creepy, but 
I don't. And then <laughs> you're gonna have oh, a man, gratuitously okay, long scene of him standing after there I, naked. After I say this, someone else has to talk because I can talk for like an hour about how terrible this movie was. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> but she like defeated all of these like guards, right, henchmen, and then she lets herself get caught. And then she breaks out of handcuffs somehow because she gets so angry, right? And then beats up the guy and then goes back up there. Or wait, I'm getting confused. No, so she goes up there and intentionally gets beat up or taken down to the basement. For what reason? Like she has the dynamite. She doesn't know how big the explosion's going to be. I don't know. Because she doesn't even she try to, to be fight inside. The guy. She's like standing yeah. right next to the dude, just all like nonchalant, like, oh, did you kill him? Oh. But she's, meanwhile, this like amazing assassin uh, bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> that and that then, whole thing. Yeah. I, don't under, I didn't understand <laughs> like her like three of non, your best guys. Her nonchalant attitude when she was finally there, and then she got knocked out unconscious twice because yeah. she wasn't even like, I don't know. So many more she problems played, like, I want to talk about. Kate Beckinsale <laughs> played, she did a good job with the character, but yes. like there were so many inconsistencies as far as like, like you're saying, like when is she actually mad or when is she using her like superpowers or whatever? There were so many instances where I'm like, wouldn't you be mad in this instance, but you're not <laughs> yeah. mad now? Or like now you're just being like totally complacent. And it, Except for the know. baby, when the babies like show up, is that Todd? Oh, hey! What's up? <laughs> What's up Sorry, buddy? I know this is annoying, but I just wanted to say hi. Yay! Hi. Hey. <laughs> here, hold what on. What are you doing? Good. You a... What are you doing? <laughs> Getting some in and out. Yeah. In and out. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch There's Joel? Scott. What up? Anyways, I'll leave you, you watch... to it, but love you boys. Wait, did you watch Joel? I haven't seen it, no, but uh, I heard it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have uh, you to blame for this. So. All right. See you soon out there, buddy. Love see you, man. Soon, right. man. I'll see you, dudes. Peace. Bye. <laughs> uh, Surprise so guest we? appearance by Todd Fong. <laughs> Very surprised. Uh, what were we saying? Yeah, there's the inconsistencies like, in the writing of the character. It's she, just... like, lost her cool when there were babies crying, but not when, like, <laughs> the dude was... I don't know. There's so many. Yeah. Well, I just think this is another case of, like, I don't know what this movie was trying to do. Like I said earlier, it should have been like a PG-13. It should have just been like a quick and dirty action movie. You don't really care about the characters, but there's cool fight scenes, whatever. But like, uh, I don't know. It like wasn't quite violent enough or it like wasn't quite like sexy enough or whatever to be anything. It's just kind of like yeah. generic or not generic. It was and in order, for, <laughs> in order for this to like work, everyone had to be a jerk. Yeah. Like that's a thing that I was like, really? Because <laughs> like they were at the they were at the uh, restaurant, right? And the waitress goes, Sir, if she's not gonna stay with you, then we need this table. And he goes, Okay. And she goes, Now. <laughs> I'm like, What? This is in the <laughs> script? And then she sits, she's like, Okay, okay, I'll stay. And then she's like, the waitress like starts berating him or whatever. And I was like, Okay, so they're doing this so that she can get mad. But like this really would not happen in real life. This is just a Unless plot device. The guy set her up with eh. using the waitress. Sure. But they okay. didn't get into that. So. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We could go with that. <laughs> Did he set her up with the like dude being a jerk to the valet as well outside right before she got inside? <laughs> no, that was just showing that she thinks about the things that she would do to people. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> my emotions are running high all the time that was so annoying just like the clips of her doing whatever she wanted to do and then not doing it clips of her beating someone up but actually she didn't do it 
clips of her beating someone up, but then she didn't do it. It was driving yeah. me nuts. It just goes, it's like, we get it that you have to have something exciting happen in the movie, but the fact that you're choosing to not have things happen instead of just yeah. writing a movie where she does these things, right? like that's a more exciting movie than her just avoiding conflict. <laughs> That's right. Funny. I like wasn't I, paying it enough attention to really realize when she did or didn't do the things, or if they were just <laughs> like a, like oh she could do this. I wasn't really watching enough to be like oh did she do it or not. I was like, All right. <laughs> it's like a it's like a good comedy thing to do in some movies, like in Superbad, where like Seth goes into the liquor store, right, like two or three different times or whatever. Like yeah. that's funny to do like once, but they did it. I I bet they did it five or six times and like. Oh, yeah, at least. It was so obnoxious. Because like Andrew said, even when you're paying attention, you're like, well, did this happen? Did this really happen? Or did yeah. it not happen? And yeah, then, I just essentially never believed that anything she was doing was real at that right. Like after the yeah. third time. Or she like broke into Stanley Tucci's office because she was mad about something and tackled him and then the screen went black. And What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And he just pulls I, the gun out every time she comes in. It's like, she, why would that ever stop her if it, the whole thing is that she has this impulse control? Her seeing a yeah. gun is not going to stop her from still attacking. If I, I didn't buy their whole... Yeah. Where she goes kind of blind with rage. Their whole relationship, I was just like, well, I, this wouldn't make sense at all. No. <laughs> like, he would be dead the first time they met. It wouldn't yeah. be like, help me, Doc. <laughs> Hey. The whole thing with the Vesset that was like not something that was actually implanted, like there it just loosely like sticks on her skin. Have you ever used like has anyone ever used that like those electrodes that they literally peel off if you move at all? It's like how is this thing supposed to be attached to her body? It didn't yeah. make any sense. I was like, oh, it's an implant. Oh no, it can just be easily peeled off. And then kissed. <laughs> and then you kiss the <laughs> kiss the little spots when you pull it off. Uh, movies like this that like feel the need to have a sex scene i just don't understand that now I, yeah i don't know maybe 13 year old me would have been like oh yeah Kate back and say oh, <laughs> but really you just see the dude's butt <laughs> yeah they really went up at it too <laughs> but it was just one of those like i i, I it just seemed dumb. Like, like, do we have to put a sex scene in movies like this now? Like, you could just like show them making out and be like, all right, they, they, they did, did it. I just feel bad for the actors because they're like, oh, I have to have a sex scene in this piece of shit movie. <laughs> <laughs> and show my butt for this. Are you really that stupid? You know what? I think I am exactly that stupid. I, I mean, I could recognize the back lot like so many times. That's yeah. just maybe because we worked on it, but. It didn't even feel like they were trying to make it look like New York at times. It was like, okay, this is like the back lot. <laughs> it's not even well dressed. Try to, to hide it with just really dark lighting. Or well, just... I feel like I feel like when you use the back lot, it's supposed to be like blurry in the background or like a quick shot. But it's like the main apartment she lived in yeah. is where <laughs> they chose to like use the back lot, where the explosion was and like where she walked several times. I don't understand too. Like, it so clearly was not New York, right? That why even say that? Like, what's the, you don't even have to say what city Where it, it is. is at all. Like, yeah. why just so we can <laughs> poke holes in it? <laughs> Some right. generic city. I know. Also, okay, yeah, she we like it. she like shimmied up that whole skyscraper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she. She hiked a fifty-story building just on the outside. It was totally I did think fun. it was. I did think it was funny that the dude was just like waiting for her at the top. At though. the top, yeah. It's just how, was like, how long was he standing there? <laughs> if he had a camera, he'd just eventually. come out at the very end. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "Well, this is stupid." But really, why did he even let her? Why didn't he just shoot her? Because they were gonna blow her up, right? So why did he even let her in the building? Because he was waiting for her. He's a sadist, and he wanted to torture her. Also, how was the CIA guy in there? Because <laughs> he, oh, he, he's an accountant, so he had a key he, card. Was I he an know. accountant? 
Was he an accountant? Or uh, he maybe not. Because the guy's like, I've killed a lot of people. So it's like, oh, well, so we don't actually know. This and if really they were just trying to get this like old dude, janitor dude killed, why did he say I'm Barry's accountant? Why didn't he just say I'm um, this guy's accountant? Yeah, you didn't have to make it a mystery. Like... <laughs> and also the detectives don't know that the guy wasn't actually killed. Or they do, and they're in on it with the CIA. Oh. Actually, yeah, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't do uh, you don't do you DNA tests. Didn't no, even look at the body have, at yeah, all. Yeah, have or... anybody? They paid out the coroner, so Ooh. clearly. I just, I know we already touched on this, but the fact that he was up there and he killed the bad guy, you, you, this movie didn't need to be a movie. <laughs> didn't even have to exist. D- d- you, you just did it. You did the thing. All right. Did he get up there? Because the only way she knew how to get up there was because she like tortured the other dude, right? And found the like secret entrance. Yeah. So the CIA <laughs> guy wouldn't have even known about that, right? Because it was all a test. And he was just waiting. He was going to tell her that, but then she blew him up. So <laughs> he didn't get to actually be like, it was a test and you passed. I think but he did say it was a test. And then he was a, like the biggest jerk ever to exist. Instead yeah. of like, yeah, we were testing you, but I really do like you. He was like, ha, <laughs> shock you, die. Yeah, especially because- All you needed was to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> the girl at the end, like, wanted Kate Beckinsale's character to keep working with them. It's like, well, why were you a dick then? Like, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Also, when the dynamite went off and she's going down in the elevator and, like, flames are chasing her, and then she just gets off at the bottom like, ding. <laughs> no issue. I was like, what? They no, even showed a fast, shot. That's how fast elevators drop. I know. Like, they showed a <laughs> shot. It's like going down in flames, and then it's just like, oh, is this my floor? Oh, seriously. If she, like, changed her shock things to be weapons, and she intentionally was killing people for some good reason, that yeah. could be a cool movie. Like, the sequel to this movie could be cool. <laughs> where she's working with the CIA and she has like electric weapons and but this movie was not she turns okay. it she turns it's into cool. a whiplash from uh, Iron Man 2 mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go also the like the idea that she was so obsessed with him after one night or whatever was so weird to me yeah. it was so oh, yeah. like it was so like written by a 50-year-old dude in the 90s sad, sad idea. Man. What is it about gross old men? Also, the, the scene where she fights the three guys. I'm like, they had two buff guys fighting each other. And then he's like, she's like, I'll fight your three best guys. And it's like three pudgy dudes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? <laughs> and as soon as I saw the nipple rings, I was, I was like, like, oh, well, he's going to get that ripped yeah, off. I know exactly what's happened with this. <laughs> I Also, it was so clear that the dude, the love interest guy was going to be the bad guy at the end. To me, I called it, like I said it right away. I was like, this is so obvious. Like, she's gonna, he's setting her up. It seemed like... I don't know if you guys knew. Bad. For, for him to play, like, a kind of, like, a timid whatever character, the, the casting was too obviously, like... Yeah. Yeah. Bad. Yeah, the whole time I was like, why? I was like, I enjoyed that he did something different, but that was, that was weird. Well, they're just like, oh, but he's got glasses on, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, accessible. <laughs> But like creepy 90s stalker glasses. <laughs> Don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. The, the writing completely took away what could have been something pretty decent to watch. It was still watchable-ish, but it still could Once. have been like, yeah. Yeah. I get, uh, it, I, had, I, it had the right cast. Yeah. It just didn't have the right, you know, and the and the right look, maybe even for for some of it. Again, I I agree with you that the the backlot stuff. It was just again a mixed bag of design you know what I just choices about? and lighting choices and things like that. Agreed. You know what I just thought about? Hmm. You could just get rid of the shock thing, and the movie would be exactly the same. Yeah. She just has an anger problem, and she's going to a therapist. And sometimes she controls it, and sometimes she doesn't. (laughs) Yeah, and she falls in love with this dude. He gets killed. Then she goes on a rampage to, like, avenge him. Turns out he was the bad guy. Like, that's the same exact movie. 
but yeah. they added this stupid electricity thing that literally didn't do anything. It didn't, it didn't add to the movie at all. <laughs> the last yeah, line of the movie also was like, not an ending line. It was like, they're like, eh, should we just end it here? <laughs> Susan Sarandon was like, get a sequel out of this. Humans are the best weapon. Credits. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is how the movie's ending? You should have just ended it with like the stupid detective and her going out or whatever. Oh. You should have just ended it with like, so you guys, should we make another? Like, would you guys watch it? It's <laughs> just the director asking. You could just talk, no, just Susan Sarandon could just talk right at the camera and be like, all right, so, Ed, would you watch another? <laughs> Question it. <laughs> it. Amazon knows that you've watched this movie. They will now be conducting a survey. Sounds right. Uh, oh, so I feel like you guys had some feelings about this. Some of them are strong and some of them were stronger. <laughs> so it's time to rate uh andrew let's start with you what are your final thoughts how many thumbs out of 10 are you giving it um geez i'm just gonna go right at it and give it i don't know i'm just gonna say like four thumbs out of 10. it was 90 minutes and it, accom <laughs> it accompanied me watching the pat mcafee show behind it <laughs> pretty well so <laughs> alex final thoughts and how many good, thumbs out of good, 10. Good. Uh, I did not even get it to all the things that I hated about this movie. Let's also, I just want to throw one more thing out there before I rate. Stanley Tucci's office was just a bunch of like old empty frames or something in the middle of New York and easily broken into for no reason. And I don't, I don't know why he would live in a place that he knows can just easily be broken into by this <laughs> homicidal no maniac. Furniture. But whatever. Um, I digress. I'm giving it three thumbs out of 10. It was hot garbage. <laughs> um, all right, I do think we've touched on it. I think the actors gave it their level best, but it was just such a bad script. It was very uneven. <clears throat> it was 90 minutes. That is probably <laughs> the, the best thing we could say for it. Um, and it had a couple pretty sequences of lighting that were then totally trashed by some really bad set deck choices and different things. I will give it how. I'll give it three thumbs out of 10. I, I yeah, it just, it, it was bad. It was, it was very bad. All right, next week, we're going to give you something else. Hopefully something that is a little more enjoyable. It is Vacation Friends. Oh, there they are. Ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom to be Emily and Marcus. What the hell is that? You son of a bitch. You said we were best friends. What are you two doing here? <laughs> oh my god! Excuse me, this is a private event. Oh, it's cool, we know the bride and groom. We met these two animals down in Mexico. <laughs> Why does the salt not taste salty? Oh, because it's cocaine. What? I don't do drugs. Even on vacation? Okay, look, we just got a container. <laughs> This only happened because you said see you later. I said it without meaning it like any decent person would. <laughs> and somehow he's charming my dad. Hope you're comfortable letting him force him. Oh, there's at least one girl involved. Everywhere they go, chaos happens. This weekend is all about you. Well, I like the sound of that. We do too. Jesus. Good evening, everyone. What is he doing up there? Marcus and I crossed paths in Mexico. We get to know each other intimately. This is the best wedding I've ever been to. Put that bottle on your head. Babe, he's not serious. We've been drinking it. <laughs> Count it! You hit the bottle this time! What? The... <laughs> Thanks so much for giving us your time. We hope you have an awesome week. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye! <laughs>